Jamie, thanks so much for being here today. Uh, you betcha. It's fun yeah. to be on this end of, uh, of the podcast. Have you done a podcast before where you're the interviewee? Yeah, I get asked about once a week now to be on other podcasts. Oh, okay. It seems like a lot of the people that I interview were starting their own podcast. Oh, nice. Like so that. you're in high demand now. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so um, I've been following you for a while. So I know a lot about your success and also just what you've done in the industry. And um, you seem to live this extraordinary life and you've been able to do that through your real estate career. So um, what we want to do here is let agents see what's possible. And if there's anyone thinking about getting the real estate license, you know, what they can do with that. And so um, first, before we get into all your success and everything, um, what was your childhood like? And just can you tell us some about your background? Sure. No, it's fun to um, I remember when I first came to Stringham. Uh, in 2005. So you're an alum? I am an alum, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, and I'd gotten my associate's degree at Utah Valley, and I was going to go to BYU, but I didn't know you actually have to apply like six months in advance. I was the, this naive, and so uh -huh. I show up to BYU like you do at UVU at the time. You just sign up for classes, and next uh -huh. thing I know, they're like, no, you have to be like accepted and stuff. So I had <laughs> nothing to do, so I'm like, well, I'll go to get my real estate license. Mm -hmm. And I remember just getting that big old fat book. Do you guys still do the big old book when you start? They're out? more it was, condensed okay. now. <laughs> it was huge. But anyway, that's kind of fun because you look at kind of where your life has gone since then. But no, as a kid, I was always um, kind of a hustler, kind of a little bit mm -hmm. entrepreneur. My family likes to tell funny little stories like um, one of their favorite stories. I guess one time when I was, I was little, I, I got like 10 bucks for something for my birthday and I knew I needed more money to do something like to get what I wanted. So mm -hmm. there was by my house within walking distance, there was a shop going a Toys R Us in Murray. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go over to shop go and find things for sale that were selling for much more at Toys R Us. And then I'd, so I'd buy them there and I'd return to Toys R Us <laughs> and I'd do the same thing at Toys R Us and, until I had like, I had like made my $10, like $200 That's and awesome. I could buy what I wanted. But I was probably 10 or 11, I don't know. So <laughs> little things like that. My parents would always like get mad at me, but I think deep down they were like, this this might actually work out in his favor. You've always had that hustle. Yeah. So then um, what made you decide real estate? I know you said you kind of just decided to do it, but was there anything that really drove you to do yeah, real estate? Yeah, my dad was an agent when I was a kid. And so I remember like playing office in his like uh, mm -hmm. downstairs little room, you know, and he'd had his little uh what was he was like era or whatever it was mm -hmm. um stuff everywhere and then um when i was kind of trying to figure out what i was going to do i was selling meat door to door and i was uh, i had a tv show that i'd started i kind of thought maybe i'd do one of those routes and then my buddy clint actually worked for a company i think it was called prosper mm -hmm. and they would sell real estate coaching to people like cds um like robert kiyosaki and uh -huh. um uh some of those older guys, you know, Alan and anyway, Carlton Sheets, No Money Down. None of those programs would even work nowadays. But uh -huh. I remember I popped them all into my car when I was driving, selling meat. And I got super intrigued with real estate. So when my buddy Nick, actually, he's a plastic surgeon now, funny enough, but he, his dad was in real estate. And he was like, dude, let's get our, you know, when I had six months to go to BYU, I, he's like, let's get our, uh, let's get our real estate licenses. And so me and him actually showed up and um, once I got my license, in my mind, I was like, well, I'll just, you know, it'll be nice to know, have the education, I'll do mm -hmm. my own deals. But then it's like, well, I got the, you know, I've got this license now, I might as well try. So I started doing a few houses and kind of got into it, got it going. Okay, so you've been an agent since 2005, right? Mm -hmm. So did you have instant success? Did it take a while? What did you, how yeah, was that good, uh, It's a good question. So my first like four or five months, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, super frustrating because, and back then you got to keep in mind, you couldn't travel. You didn't have internet if you traveled. You didn't have access to email. You'd have to find an That's internet true. cafe. <laughs> I mean, it was like, it was really inconvenient. And so, mm -hmm. and I love to be on the go and do a lot of things. And so I remember I went on a trip to run with the bulls in Spain. Oh, wow. I'd been an agent for about two months. And, uh, and while I was gone, like a deal fell apart. My broker was all mad. I mean, there would be three or four days your phone just, I didn't have an international pass, you mm. know. And so, I mean, it was just really hard to do. And uh, yeah, so my first six months, I think I only sold like four or five homes. Okay. I really wasn't, I was struggling and I was kind of trying to figure out if I was going to keep doing it or not. It was actually really cool. I was selling meat door to door at the same time. I had a little company I'd start up. We had 10 or 12 sales guys. And I remember one day, like, I didn't know this at the time, but my partner was a guy from the Netherlands and he'd been siphoning off a bunch of money and oh, was wow. essentially stealing all of our profits. And I was, I mean, I was naive. I was young, 23, mm -hmm. 24 years old. And I was trying to 
figured out why I didn't have any money. Like we were selling a lot of steak and chicken. And I remember I was sitting at my desk one night and I was just like, it was long days, long nights. And I pulled out a drawer and there was a flyer to go to a, a Mike Ferry coaching event. Oh, okay. And it was like the next day. I remember it was like three, 400 bucks or something. I remember thinking like, geez, if I had the money, I'd do that, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it was, the flyer was genius for me because the thing I was frustrated with when I started real estate is I didn't know how to work expired listings. I didn't know how to work for sell by owners and I didn't have a listing presentation. I didn't join like a, a Keller Williams or a, you know, one of the big companies mm-hmm. that could really, um, like a, you know, train. Like, yeah, Remax, Prudential, mm-hmm. some of these ones that have this good training. And so I just was kind of flying by the seat of my pants. And I read that flyer and I'm like, man, that's all the stuff I've always wanted to know. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go anyway. So I called them up and, they're like, yeah, just come and whatever. I think I found like a couple hundred bucks on a credit card. And I mean, I was broke. I was, I was, I had no money. I had put everything into this meat company and uh, took on a lot of, taking on a lot of debt. But anyway, so I go to the seminar. I remember day one. I mean, I've been an agent about six months at this time. Mm-hmm. And again, sold four or five homes. And day one, they're going through, it was Bill Pipes, who's like one of my best friends now. Mm-hmm. He was, we are just on Saturday, he came to my big black tie gala I threw, and I love that man. But um, he was teaching it, and day one, they go through all this stuff. And I'm like, man, this is gold. I was loving it. And I remember I had, like, my hat backwards, my tattered <laughs> jeans, you know, and I was just a total goof. And, uh, and he gave us a homework that night, and I went home and did it and got, like, two leads. So I went back the next day pretty excited, and I listened again. And they started talking about this coaching program. It was, like, $1,000 a month. I'm like, this is insane. Like, yeah. I had a condo that I bought in Provo where I was living at and my payment was about a thousand bucks a month and I remember thinking like that's my condo payment people are insane I can't believe they're paying a thousand dollars a month and uh, I remember there was a girl sitting next to me she uh, we'd gone to high school together Mm -hmm. and uh, she was looking at me too she's like yeah this is crazy I can't believe people pay this but I went out in the hall and there was a couple agents from Mountain Land Realty Mm -hmm. and they really used the Mike Ferry system a lot and they were talking about the system they had their little badge on that they were in the coaching and so I go hey you guys do this they're like well yeah you know most of it I'm like well, what do you mean they're like well, it was really hard to do it 100% and so like I'm like well how many homes are you guys selling and they'd all sold 40 50 homes that year I'm like good golly You're like, worth and it. Uh, I'm like wait <laughs> you guys don't do it all the way though I'm like but it works they're like well yeah and I remember thinking to myself, well that's dumb I'll just do it 100% <laughs> yeah and so I went home that night did the homework again got like four leads wow I'm like oh my gosh this stuff all works so the next day I go back I remember I, I go up to him at the end of the thing and I said, hey, I don't have any money. Like, if you run this card, it's going to decline. But if you'll hold it for three weeks, I got a deal closing and uh, I want to do this coaching program. And he's like, well, maybe you should wait. And I was like, no, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to do this because mm-hmm. he was, you could tell I was like, you know. <laughs> Broke. And I'm like, no, I'm going all in. So I signed up and my next two months, my first two months under coaching with um, that system I mean, I was prospecting four or five hours a day with a script. I was role playing from seven to eight. I mean, I really dove all in. Mm-hmm. I think I ended up putting like 60 deals under contract in two months. Wow. And this was 2000. This was now the beginning of 2006 when everybody was buying homes. Yeah. And so I just was calling anyone and everyone, making 70 calls a day. And by the end of that next year, I'd sold um, my first full year, I'd sold 60 deals uh, closed. And the next year, I sold 98. Wow. And so it kind of. Um, took off and I did I I mean I was all in I 100% I made my office I, I joined Keller Williams um, and I made them they built a new office I was one of the original owners of the Utah County office mm-hmm. and I made them build me this little like room that was just for my prospect oh, wow. um, and I, I mean I got my money's worth out of that that room I for five six years I just go in every morning there was no chair no computer no no distractions I would mm-hmm. stand up and make my calls for three four hours a day Wow That's amazing. It's fascinating. Um, And I have heard that you said that at one point you got kind of burnt out from doing that. Totally got burnt out from doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened, it got 2008 hit, you know, I mean, it was those that weren't in real estate in 2008, Mm -hmm. 2009, they'll never understand how hard it was. Um, Every person that you talked to was 25, 30% upside down. Everybody Mm -hmm. that you sold a house to, you had to tell them, hey, you're probably going to lose 10 to 20% value before Mm -hmm. this thing goes back up. So I remember I had a presentation that um, my coach had taught me that how to show somebody that if you'll just hold this for five years, you should still buy it. It was like the only, and it was really hard. I mean, you're sitting across the table from couples that had made like some decision to buy an investment property that had fallen apart. They're upside down 120 grand, wow. making 45 grand a year. 
they're balling. I saw one couple, I swear they divorced right in front of me, you know, oh and it was hard. It was yeah. like, you know, mentally and emotionally, I just, I got burned out. So I was like, man, I, and I was working so hard. I listed in 2008, I went back and looked one time. I listed 187 for sale owners. Wow. I think I sold 19 of them. Wow. So it gives you an idea. You've got yeah. all these people. I'm like, look, I'm still your best hope. It's just not a very good one still. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was hard. That became really taxing on me. And I said, I need to do something different. And um, so I went back to school part time and then I started coaching high school baseball. Mm -hmm. I just needed to do something that yeah. would be like Outlet. I was excited about. Mm -hmm. And that was huge for me. You know, I took about a four month. I went to Bingham High School and um, got to do that. And I was still like the team was I was still number one in my office, but it was like you'd taken a 70 percent pay cut yeah. from 2006 yeah. and seven. So, yeah, it was hard. I definitely uh, during that time frame, I never was like going to quit, but I I started looking at other opportunities mm -hmm. and things like that okay okay so um recently how has your platform changed is for prospecting getting clients things like that yeah so in 2010 i sat down with bill again he became my personal coach mm -hmm. um what was cool about having that early success is a lot of people wanted to kind of show my story mm -hmm. i guess and so i got put on stages in front of thousands of people sometimes and i would call for sell by owners or i would you know talk about selling 98 homes my second year in real mm -hmm. estate and stuff and so i got some really cool exposure and bill became my personal coach okay and bill um is in his genius is he coaches only the top agents in the country and mm -hmm. so he was getting so much information from these great agents. And there was a group of us that would go around the country and meet every month too, or every every quarter called the top producers. About a 200 of us through Mike. Mm -hmm. And so I got exposed to all these great people. I mean, you're sitting across the table from Chris Heller, who went on to be the CEO of Keller Williams, mm -hmm. or you know, some just amazing people. And anyway, and so Bill and I sat down in 2010 and he's like, we got to do something different, dude. This for sell by owner thing is burning you out. Like mm -hmm. I'd called so many, I'd listed so many homes. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. And he said, well, let's make a list. Who has money? Because in 2010, it was like nobody no, was buying. Yeah. Everybody was on the fence. He goes, let's find out who has money. The investments are out there. The deals are cash flowing like crazy. And let's go meet them. So we made a list of 15 people that I was going to sell a home to. And I think I sold 14 of them a home within wow. the next year. Yeah. And so we set up a game plan that um, I actually teach the system now. It's might be what you're referring to called the 100K Agent Blueprint. Mm -hmm. And the reason I call it that is because any agent can pick up and if they do these things, they'll make six figures in the first six months. Like, And so what I did essentially, it was kind of four or five prong approach, but number one was networking. Okay. Um, I really teach people really well how to network. I, I'm, I'm saying this to try to brag, but I don't think anybody has a better network than I do in Utah. No, I, I believe it. <laughs> I love the group of people I've been able to get around. I, I'm not even worthy of their presence, but um, but there's some really some key things you can do to network and get involved with their different people. Um, the second thing is social media became a huge tool in this time frame, and I get about 40% of my leads now. Um, through Instagram and Facebook. Wow. And so we started really focusing and putting attention towards social media. Um, client parties became a big one. I was kind of the first one. I actually taught Jordan Commons how to throw a client party where you would rent out the whole theater. At the time, no one had ever done it. Really? You yeah, the first yeah. Time? It was like, like Pirates of the Caribbean 2 or something. And they now were everybody like, does it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, now I can't even get a space because they're sold out. I'm like, cool, guys. Remember me? Um, <laughs> No, but I remember like teaching them how to do it. And I'm like, hey, look, like, because I, I called them. I'm like, I want to rent the whole theater. And they're like, well, you can't just rent the whole theater. And I'm like, well, yeah, you can. Just sell me every ticket then, I guess. And so anyway, that's how long ago I started doing these client So was parties. that something that you thought up or your coach helped um, you? I think I'd heard it from one of those other agents at this top producers thing. Okay. Like one thing I do really well is I just see people that are having success and just copy what they're doing. I mean, it's literally that's the formula for success is, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So the, mm -hmm. the, the benefit of that group was we were from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And so we really um, were willing when we'd open up, when we'd meet in Chicago, Miami, San Francisco, it was different every quarter. And people would share their really what they were doing. Like if you go to a lot of trainings, yeah. people just tell you stuff, but they're not telling you that those key things. Mm -hmm. And these people all came from an abundance mindset. We were all sharing the real secrets. And so mm -hmm. I think that's where I picked that up at. Um, but yeah, so I started throwing these client parties and, um, and that was a, a third one, uh, a big part of what I was doing. And then the, uh, and obviously the lead generation is a big part of it. But, um, and so, you know, those were the main things, the client parties, 
uh, and events, the networking mm -hmm. and the social media were kind of the main things I started doing to build my business. Okay, awesome. So um, you did mention you met with all these people and they all had this abundant mindset. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed that you talk a lot about that, about the importance of a positive mindset in order to have success. So tell us a little bit about that and if uh, agents are lacking that, how do they get that? Um, yeah. What do you do? So especially in real estate, people want, I always look at it as like it's a funnel. So mm -hmm. if you think about a funnel at the top, it's very big and then it kind of funnels down into a small hole at the end, right? And people want to focus on the bottom, the hole where everything, that's the result mm -hmm. because that's what we can see. So like people, for example, I had a, for a long time, I wasn't very good at training new agents because they'd come into my office and they'd see me, how I was doing things. And I go, well, that's what I want to do. You know, I'm, I'm literally building my business by throwing client parties and going on vacation with people. And so they were like, well, that sounds fun. And um, what they didn't see was how I built that network in the first place, mm -hmm. some of those other things. And so people always want to see the result. And they're like, well, you know, all these deals are coming to you or whatever. But what they don't see is the funnel. So I always tell people, you have to focus on what goes in the funnel. And this is for you, whether you're in real estate or any business or just mm -hmm. in mindset in general. If you're trying to say like, okay, I'm going to be happy today, that doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. But if you do the things that make you happy every day, you're serving other people, you're eating healthy, you're working out, you're um, you know, just going about being surrounded by good people, reading good books, putting good information in your head, then you're going to eventually be happy. It's very difficult. But that's So what I always teach people is you've got to focus on what goes in the funnel. Mm -hmm. Focus on what you're doing today. And it takes time. You have to, it's like a real estate transaction. It needs time for it to get mm -hmm. to the end. Yeah. But if you're willing to do that, then the end result will be what you want it to be. It's, it's like that compound effect where it's like every little thing adds up and then it has a big result, but people just want the result now without doing all the yeah, little things. Yeah, it's like to... patience is such a virtue. Okay. It really is. Like I always like, it, it, things will happen to me today that I had no idea. To, like literally back, I planted the seed back in 2002. I literally just sold a duplex to a guy today. Um, I called his wife in 2009 as a for sale by owner. They weren't even married at the time. They met years later, but uh -huh. I called her. She was living in South Jordan. She was getting a divorce. Um, helped them sell that property, mm -hmm. uh, helped her sell that property. And, you know, she became a client friend of mine and uh, got remarried. And this guy now, I mean, I think it's the fifth or sixth investment property they've bought. But I mean, I called her wow. as a for sale by owner in 2009. Nine years ago. Yeah. So That's it's like, amazing. you know, that you can't focus on like people. Then here's the thing with for sale by owners. Like people come to me all the time because I used to be like the king of Fizbuzz, you know. Uh -huh, yeah. um, but what they didn't see was when I started calling for sale by owners, I had to make 75 calls to get an appointment. By the time I pretty much quit calling for sale by owners, and even today, if I pick up the phone right now today, I'd bet my life um, 15 calls, I'm going to get an appointment. Like, no doubt about it. And that's where I got to. But I got there by making literally over 10,000 calls to for sale by owners and learning those right ways to do that. And so it's, again, you have to have patience and you have to keep doing something. If you do it for a day or a week or a mm -hmm. month, it might or might not work. People always ask me, I do you know some huge client parties now. Um, I do a, a 4th of July party where we have over 5,000 mm -hmm. people come. And this lady wanted to help advertise, you know, be a part of it. And she goes, well, I need to know how many sales you get from it. And I'm like, I, I can't give you like an amount. I don't yeah. know. I just know that like I entertain people. I do good. I introduce good people. I try to always give back and the money rolls in. Mm -hmm. I can't quantify per deal, per party, mm -hmm. why. But I just know like the more I pump into that funnel, the more I get success out of it. Okay. And so I think some people might see you and see all you've done and all you've accomplished and all the amazing friends, the network you have, and they think, well, that's him. I can't do that. Mm. Do you think it's possible for anyone to do that? Or do you have to have special characteristics? Well, the what cool thing about, so there's certain, uh, Tony Robbins talks about this. He goes, life kind of has two things. You got the science of achievement and the art of, uh, of fulfillment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So achievement really is a science. And there's people that naturally are more gifted at certain things than other people, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it is a science. Like you can learn to be a more attractive person. Mm -hmm. I actually teach people how to show up as a more attractive person. Um, how to, like so many people, I'll, I'll give you one really good example. They just don't even get how to be an attractive person. So like I did this event on Friday night, my buddy Jason Van Camp um, is an ex Green Beret, Special Forces. Him and his buddy started a company for um, 
uh, former military vets, when they get back out of the military, the reason why a lot of times they're a little depressed is because they don't have that same purpose. Their mm -hmm. life meant so much and now they're yeah. kind of trying to figure it out. So what he figured out helps them the most is to help them through their entrepreneur pursuits. Mm -hmm. And so he did this like shark tank. And so there's a couple hundred people there. I'm one of the, you know, five sharks that's oh, awesome. deciding if they're going to invest in this company or not. And it was, went really well. The mm -hmm. night was really cool. And this guy comes up to me afterwards from the audience, just mm -hmm. some random guy, and he couldn't help himself. He just like, he sticks his business card in my face. He's like, I love you up there. I want to talk to you about my company. And immediately he was coming from his own, like, what can I benefit from uh -huh. this guy, yeah. right? I can't remember his name. I threw his card away. It doesn't matter. Like people done wrong. Networking is a nightmare. Done yeah. wrong. Networking just gives you anxiety to even think yeah. about it, but done right. There's nothing more fun. And so, you know, I teach these principles and help people understand. That's one of the things in the course, probably the most important part of it, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. The most, my, if you listen to my podcast, um, The Jimmy Rex Show, I, I think we just released episode 110. Mm -hmm. I interview all the most exceptional people here in Utah. We actually just got um, bumped up on the iTunes to a top 50 national business podcast, which That's is really awesome, cool. Yeah. There's over 350,000. So Yeah, I it, listen. So Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. But I talk about it all the time is how to network the right way. Because if everybody needs something, and if you're willing to figure that out, mm -hmm. you can figure that out for any person that you want in your life. But, you know, and people say, like, well, isn't that kind of, like, sketchy to, like, strategically pick who you want to be friends with? I'm like, no, not even close. Like, the mistake most people make is becoming friends with who lives next to them. Exactly. Who, you know, mm -hmm. happened to sit next to them in school when they were in high school. Like, people just become friends with these random people. But I do it by choice. Like, who inspires me? I'll yeah. make a list of a thousand people and pick the one person that I think I want to be friends with and figure out how I can go about doing that. Yeah. And so to me, it's very much like it's a lazy way to live to just become friends with who happens to move in mm -hmm. next door. I want to know, like, you know, who makes me better, who inspires me, yeah. who uh, makes me a better person in my own life, and that's who I surround myself yeah, with. Yeah, I've heard you say that before, and, and others say that you need to spend, with the five people that you spend the most time with is who you're going to become like. So surround yourself with those people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. And you're right, so many people just they're lazy about it or just whoever they happen to know they just stick around with but um do you have an example of someone that you sought out that you like i want to be like that person i'm going to be friends with them and do you have an example sure, of someone no, and I how you a, did it i have a million examples like that um um one is one of my close buddies um is Kyle Van Noy. He's a mm -hmm. middle linebacker for the yeah. New York Patriots. So he was, I just loved the way he played on the field. I heard him in a couple interviews when he was a freshman, sophomore, and had kind of followed his story. He got a DUI right when he signed with BYU and had to sit out a year, but he stayed at BYU. I just thought he had a cool story, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to get to know this cat. And uh, so I made it a point. I'm like, I'm going to know that guy. Like, I want to become friends with him. And at the time, it was like, I don't know, I'd never been friends with any of the football players, you know? Mm -hmm. And long story short, I won't go into the details, but like, I made that happen through a series of things of going out of my way to try to benefit Kyle's life as far as like I introduced him for example to the uh, Marissa at a data I did a date auction for Subverse Hannah oh yeah um, where we basically auctioned off a date with my friends I got the you know the most attractive people I could mm -hmm. and since he was the star of the football team I had a couple of his roommate buddies there he came he let us auction him off Marissa at the time was Miss Utah they came met up at my party and the rest is history and I'm getting married. Well, me and him end up becoming close friends. He ends mm -hmm. up becoming my roommate. Um, you know, I was there the night he got engaged. I was there the night of his wedding. I was there when he won the AFC championship with the Patriots. And then he actually got me a field pass for the a family pass when they won the Super Bowl two years ago. I was one of the few people that was on the field with Kyle. And he and it's not about like because he's a celebrity. Yeah. Like I never knew if he was gonna you know make it in the NFL yeah. or whatever else. But here's where it matters. So I'll give you one just one example. And I knew that he was the kind of person that I just wanted to be around. So I'll give you one example. So I had a buddy that owns a, a, a spa in mm -hmm. Orem and he called me. This was when me and Kyle were, um, I think Kyle was a freshman. At, or I'm sorry. I think he would just graduate from BYU or his first year in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And uh, he happened to be in Utah. And my buddy calls me up and he goes, Hey, there's a lady that works for me and mm -hmm. her daughter, she's a junior in high school. She broke her leg and they went to reset. It was her femur. And she was in bed for 11 months. Oh. And then she, he goes, uh, it grew back, but it grew back wrong. Oh, no. And they have to break it and reset it again. She's going to miss an entire another year of her school. I mean, she's a junior in high school. And she goes, look, she's a diehard. My buddy goes, He's a di she's a diehard football fan, BYU mm -hmm. fan. And her favorite player of all time is Kyle. And I know oh. you guys are friends. 
um, is there any way you could just have him hold up a poster that says like get well soon or whatever I was like well, let me call him and see and mm-hmm. I called Kyle and he's like dude let's go visit her and he's like where's she at and I was like uh, Eagle Mountain he's like all right let's go so we go out there and a couple of the other players um, you know and Kyle we walk in the door and Kyle spends two hours with this girl wow. and the whole family's balling I'm balling Aww. and it made just such a difference in her life yeah and it's like that's where I knew that was the kind of life I want to have where I can help people have these types of experiences. This mm-hmm. is what makes life um, incredible to me, extraordinary, right? And so, yeah, I mean, by seeking out that relationship, by putting effort in, by becoming a person that Kyle knew he wanted to be friends with, mm-hmm. that was one example where him and I became, you know, super close. And I mean, so many people's lives have been blessed because of my relationship with Kyle and, and those things. And, and his life has been blessed too. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people see these people that they'd love to be friends with. They just don't know how or how to reach out. Well, I would say everybody needs something. Okay. So you just think about it. Like, what do people need? I'll give you an, a different example. There's a guy in town. He's a um, owns a billion dollar business here in Utah. And I want to be friends with him. Like, I just, like, I, always, I loved when I heard him speak, what he built. I just is so admirable. And, um, but I knew that it was very, I mean, he's got a great family. He's got kids, wife dude's kind of set on whatever he wants and I'm like geez what could I offer him and Mm -hmm. I started really thinking about it I knew his son played high school football and so I knew a lady that would go to the games she was for hire and she would take pictures at football games of you know the team and the players Mm -hmm. and then she'd sell them Mm -hmm. so I just had her go to one of their games take a bunch of pictures of his team him um, you know the kid and everything and and then I just emailed him to him I sent him to him and said hey you know I had a photographer at the game she got these pictures back, just thought you might like them. He's like, dude, this is the coolest gift anyone's ever given me. Thank you so much. And we became close, close friends, you know, to this day. And so like, that's an example where I had nothing to offer this guy, but I knew I was like, no, I, there is something I can offer this guy. Right. And so you got to think outside the box sometimes, Mm -hmm. but more than anything, just come from contribution. It can be little things, right. Or whatever. But, um, I always say, if you want to meet those people, whoever they are for you, Mm -hmm. become the type of person that those people want to meet. Exactly. I like that. Um, and so, you know, we've talked a lot about your success in real estate, your success in networking with all these great friends you have. Um, on the flip side of that, you know, I think a lot of agents are afraid of failure or have experienced failure, feel like they're failing, um, or aspiring agents are scared to become agents because they're scared to fail, you know? Um, so is there any examples you could give us of times where you failed, but you've just got back up and... For and sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and... To me, failure is when you have too much fear to try something. Failure mm-hmm. is to not do something because of um, because you're afraid of how you'll look to other people. And mm-hmm. you know, Tony Robbins talks about it all the time. The two biggest fears that we all have is that we're not enough mm-hmm. or we're not loved. And we think if we fail, people are gonna not, um, love, us. not love us or yeah. we're not gonna be good enough for them, right? So I'll start off by saying, like, the greatest thing you can do is, I mean, think about it. You can be if you failed 50 times in a row asking out, you know, a girl or a guy that mm-hmm. you're interested in, but the one clicks and works and you have an amazing marriage because of that where you feel lucky to be with them are you a failure or are you a huge success when it comes to your marriage yeah well you're a huge success same thing with business right like you can literally fail 15 companies a row and then you hit it with one company millions of dollars later Mm -hmm. boom you're a success like you're like a giant success right and so the I'll give like some examples like of just when things went bad for me I mean my meat company you know I ended up losing I mean by the time I figured out that this guy was stealing my money like I didn't even know until he disappeared for two weeks. He went on a drug binge. We had franchised the company to this guy named Martin down in St. George, this guy mm-hmm. from Argentina. And he'd given $35,000 to my partner, um, this guy named Herman. Mm-hmm. And Herman disappeared for two weeks. I had no idea he had a drug issue. Um, when he came back, the money was all gone. He was wearing the same clothes he was the day before. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was a bad day. I mean, yeah. We were both balling. I just said, look, I never want to see you again. And, uh, and so I had... At 24 years old, I had $120,000 debt to Mountain America, to wow. my, these lawyers that helped us franchise the company, to the suppliers that gave us the meat, to the you know rent for the building, where, the warehouse where we had the walk-in freezer. And keep in mind, I had 12 guys working for me. Wow. I had two you know um, fathers working for me that were supporting their families. And here I am you know, with all this mountain of debt. And I'm thinking, nobody's ever going to want to talk to me again. Nobody will ever trust me again. I just said, you know what, like I have to figure this out. But Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want to sell meat anymore. And that was right when I got my real estate license. I'd probably just got my real estate license like the same time it happened. This was um, right in the whole mix of that whole thing. And 
Um, and so I tried to figure out the meat thing for a couple of months while I was starting out in real mm-hmm. estate. That's probably one of the reasons why my first few months were a little slow. Mm-hmm. And I shut down right after that Mike Ferry seminar is when I shut the meat thing down. I just said, you know what, I'm done with this. I told my brother about two months before, my brother Dale said, go get your real estate license. We're going to be realtors. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and uh, he's at the time, we were, he was helping me run the meat thing. And, uh, and then... You know, I had to shut it down and I mean, I had 120 grand debt. And so at 24 years old, that is a mountain of debt. Yeah. Every single person my age had a lot more money than I did. Uh, even if they didn't have a dollar to their name, they had a hundred grand more than I mm-hmm. did probably. So I made a poster board of everyone I owed money to, how much it was. Wow. And then every month when I started selling houses, those first 60 deals, I didn't exactly take home a bunch of cash. But the beauty of what happened is little by little I'm paying this off and the satisfaction that comes with not bankrupting out of that or with, mm-hmm. you know, calling each one of these people and look, here's what's happened. I'm going to pay you back. Mm-hmm. I just need time. And little by little I paid each person back. I remember when I wrote the last check was to Mountain America. Wow. That must and, have felt uh, good. <laughs> cross that off my poster board. And I just remember thinking like, all right, I can get through anything. You know, yep. and it was like that was such a horrible, it was a dark time. It's not I like bet. I enjoyed that. It was really yeah. hard, you know. Um, but it took me a few years. Um, but what it did do is I had to work so hard when I started in real estate because mm-hmm. I had this mountain of debt that I thought was going to handicap me from ever having a woman interested in me or to ever have friends and like all these things. I'm like, if anybody knew how much debt I had, you know, and, uh, but then once it was all paid off, I had built on accident this great real estate company because I had no other choice than to work so hard. I was working 70 hours a week. I, wow. I really was. And so by the time that was done, real estate started rolling. Um, so that's one example where I would definitely consider it. It's a failure, but at the same time, I mean, is it, right? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't change it. But at the same time in the moment, yeah, I sure felt like a failure. Yeah. Well, I mean, things that don't work out, they're just op- learning learning opportunities, right? So I think that was huge for you. And I mean, look at you now. So that's amazing. Um, so um, I know you have a couple of ebooks out. I've read one of them. Um, tell us a little bit about that, why you produced them, and what those are about. Yeah, I mean, for so many years, I just, I, so many people would tell me, like, dude, you've got to share your information with more people. You've got to share your network with more people. You've got to, um, you know, the people would talk with me, like, dude, your story is incredible. I want, like, people need to hear this. Like, your principles, you, I've had a, life coach, a real estate coach, you know, basically since 2006, I have a relationship coach. I've, I've had a lot of very highly successful people around me and I wanted to start sharing all that. Enough people tell you, you should do something, you decide yeah. I should probably do it. And so I started like kind of just mapping out what I do differently than a normal real estate agent. And that kind of became this formula for new agents. Originally it was just kind of like, okay, if I have new agents, I want to show them exactly what I do. Um, and the information I realized was really good. So I was like, all right, I'm going to put together a system and I don't know, like share this with people, you know, mm-hmm. and sell it. And so I started, uh, yeah, so then I put together that system. And so, um, now it's a lot of content creation, obviously. I, mm-hmm. I'm very inspired by people like Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Tony actually, I've gotten to know him a little bit. He goes undercover with us with Operation yeah, Underground. Yeah, he's one of my heroes. <laughs> yeah, he's the best. And, uh. And I just, I love that. I love the idea. And you start putting out a little bit of information. Like I started the podcast and you start seeing people reach out to you and it means something to them. It changes their lives. Mm-hmm. I was literally at Gold's Gym or Vasa Gym, whatever it is, um, t- two, three days ago. I'm sitting in the sauna and this dude that I've never seen in my life, he's sitting next to me. He pulls his headphones out and he goes, dude, you're Jimmy Rex, right? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, I'm literally listening to your podcast right now. And he That's shows so me. That's so crazy. And he goes, dude, I love your stuff. It like helps me like, and he started going through this whole thing, you know, and I'm like, man, that's really cool. You know, and I'm getting at least a person a day pretty much reaching out to me, like in one way or another, it's helping them. Mm-hmm. And so you see how that gets addicting to people like Tony and Gary. Yeah. And so now I love it. I love, you know, every day I'm, I'm putting out two podcasts a week. I put out a blog a week. I'm putting out a lot of content. I'm doing this mastermind for anybody that wants to start their 2019 with goal setting. I'm, I've put together this amazing program, kind of what I do, you know, what I want to accomplish, why I'm going to accomplish it mm-hmm. and kind of the, how to map that out. And so I've put that together for other people. Um, we did it last year with my real estate team and my team did amazing this year. They all set their goals and hit them. And, That's you know, awesome. you're seeing, you know, one guy on my team ended up for two weeks with his girlfriend in Australia. And that was like on his, it was like this list of like, when I'm 50, I want to do this. Uh-huh. And I'm like, screw that, dude, you're do doing that this year. That's awesome. And, you know, and he made it happen, just stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, so I just put that all together so I can help other people get and achieve. I, so 
Tony Robbins, when I went to his event, Date with Destiny, mm -hmm. it was two years ago, and you spend six days coming up with your purpose for your life. And I got very clear on what my purpose is to be. Mm -hmm. And so now everything I do is um, to work towards that purpose. And a big part of that um, is to share my happiness with others, teach other people how to do this, and to show people what how they can live an extraordinary life. And so I put a lot of effort into doing that now. That's awesome. Well, I know you've affected a lot of people, and myself included. Yeah. I love your stuff. And no, I appreciate you listening to it. you know, all positive, and it inspires me. So I know that yeah, you, you are, you know, contributing a lot to others. And, and speaking of contributing, um, you, and you talked about Operation Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about that and um, how that came to be. And Yeah, that. so, I mean, most people have heard of us now at this point. It's a group um, started by a guy named Tim Ballard, mm -hmm. and he was a CIA agent that um, just saw this need around the world um, for kids that were being sex trafficked. There's over 2 million kids um, worldwide that are being sex trafficked. And he was kind of hamstrung working for the government because his jurisdiction was just the United States. And mm -hmm. so he basically quit his job to start this group. And the whole purpose is to liberate these you know, kids that are being um, trafficked and things like that. It's a little bit of a, a dark topic, but the yeah. first time I ever heard about it, it just spoke to me, spoke to my soul, and I was like, I want to be a part of this. And so I used all my skills and techniques that I know of how to um, become a person that can be important to others and um, kind of worked my way through this to be a huge part of this group. And now I get to go undercover, and um, for the last few years, I've been on 11 ops with them, and we've wow. helped, you know, on ops that I was a, directly a part of, we've helped rescue over 100 kids and put over 40 traffickers away. And um, as a company now, I think we're over 1,600 kids rescued. Wow, that's um, amazing. Yeah, that's so, so meaningful. Yeah, so I've I just really been able to be blessed to be a part of that. But this, so like the Black Tie Gal I did literally four days ago um, is the, the part that we're working with right now is called Children Need Families, and we help find homes um, and help provide grants for families that want to adopt these children that have been rescued. And mm -hmm. so we were able to raise on Saturday, we raised right around $150,000. Awesome. And yeah, there'll be, you know, probably about 15 to 20 kids that will be adopted through that, um, just that one event. And so it's really cool to be a part of it. I mean, we're going next weekend, um, the Pittsburgh Steelers partnered with us, Mike Tomlin, cool. the head coach. And so we're going out, we're having dinner with the team before they play the Patriots. Wow. Um, we won't tell them, I'm going to probably have my Kyle Van Noy sweatshirt underneath, but, uh, you know, it's my guy still. I got to cheer yep. for him. But the Steelers are honestly like my 1A and 1B favorite team now. I love them. And so we're going to be able to go out and hang out with the team and do a little after party if they win with them. And um, they've helped us get a ton of awareness and been on ESPN and stuff like that through wow. this organization. Um, but like, like I said, I mean, we've had Tony Robbins with us several times undercover, um, Glenn Beck, and uh, just amazing people here locally. You know, I mean, Sean Ray has hosted our gala. Mm -hmm. um, he's the attorney general here in Utah. Yeah. And just have a really cool group of people that have gotten behind this cause. And, and so it's been a really fun purpose to add to my life. Yeah. And it's something I'm sure I'll do for the rest of my life in yeah. one aspect or another. I love how you just see something that you want and you just go for it and you figure out. Because I, I think I heard you say something once about you approached Tim Ballard and you're like, I want to be a part of it. And he kind of shut yeah, you down. Yeah, well, I, I actually put, approached a guy named Paul Hutchinson. Oh, okay. So yeah. not Tim, but um, someone yeah, it was Paul, up but there. Paul was kind of at the time the guy that was um, really in charge of helping fundraise a lot of the money. Mm -hmm. And he was the main dude that was going undercover. Paul, to this day, is the best undercover operative that really? OUR has ever had. Yeah, he's amazing um, at that aspect and he spoke about this op they did in Colombia. there's actually a movie coming out in um, may or june called the sound of freedom mm -hmm. um jim caviezel who was passion of the cries yeah. count of monte cristo mm -hmm. he plays tim ballard oh, wow. and it's about this op in Colombia and kind of how tim started operation underground railroad anyway so paul had just gone on that op and he was talking about this rescue and I went up to him afterwards, and it was at this networking lunch, you know, and I'd never met Paul, and I just said, hey, I, I want to be in on this. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of it. Yeah. And he's, he really brushed me off. He's like, okay. And he told me later, he goes, dude, we had three, 400 people in line, like ex-Navy SEALs, yeah. ex-military, yeah. ex-cops that wanted to do it. And, uh, and I was like, you know, he kind of blew me off, and I said, hey, I'm doing this. Like, yeah. this is going to be something I'm going to do now. And he's <laughs> like, well, you can't just – be a part of it. He's like, look, if you're really interested, we're doing a, a fundraising dinner next weekend. It's 5,000 bucks at table though. And I just said, great, put me down. You know, and I called some of my most legit friends and got some beautiful women to come with us and just went, had a fun time. Paul came out to me and, you know, I met Tim at that dinner and mm -hmm. Paul came up and he's like, all right, let's go to lunch. And, um, and I just looked at him and he goes, look, you can't just be a part of it. I said, you did. 
And he's like, I'm like, you're nobody. I'm nobody. Like we're both real estate sales guys. And he kind of laughed. He's like, well, all right, here's a formula if you want to do it. Here's what I did. Do this and we'll see. And uh, long story short, um, you know, I helped them throw a, a fundraiser to raise a lot of money. I donated a lot of money myself. I did a bunch of tr- like fight to kill training mm-hmm. um, to, so that I physically would be, you know, in a good spot to do it. And anyway, long story short, I got to go on my first op, became an asset to them. And now, you know, I'm part of the, um, we call ourselves the kick-ass kid rescuer group. But, That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's so cool. So it kind of seems like, you I mean, you've done almost everything. Like you've just done it all. You've succeeded in so many ways what goals do you have right now what is next for you yeah what's kind of funny is I feel like I'm just starting really (laughs) yeah I mean I don't know where my life goes I try I I, one of the things I try to teach people especially here in Utah I think a lot of people put these undue expectations on what their life has to look like Mm -hmm. so a big thing that I do right now is I try to help people eliminate shame or Mm -hmm. an expectation what their life needs to be I think, you know, and we live in a culture where there's this specific expectation and you're supposed to be married by this age or you're supposed to do this with your life. You're Mm -hmm. supposed to kind of do fall in line in these ways. And I try to kill that for people. Yeah. If you can find the beauty in the mess of your life, then there's very, there's very little self-inflicted pain Mm -hmm. and you really can build a beautiful thing. And so for me, um, you know, my current cause that I'm working on a lot of that is that just helping people kill expectations where their life needs to be and helping them enjoy the beauty and the mess Mm -hmm. um but I'm you know I'm obviously going to keep doing the real estate thing my Mm -hmm. team will end up right around 180 deals this year which you've been averaging for the last five years yeah I've kind of been right there for about four or five years in a row yeah it's you know it's cool because I've I've never wanted to have one of these big massive teams that's kind of like a brokerage but at the same time we're lean and mean I got five of us you know Mm -hmm. and everyone on my team makes six figures we all have great lives every person on my team took at least 40 vacation days this year I mean it's really we 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 live this a life worth having Mm and um I you know I might add an agent or two in the next year but um so I want to keep the real estate thing going Mm -hmm. um I've obviously going to keep doing the stuff with Operation Underground Railroad. Um, and I don't know. I don't know where my life goes. You know, every week um, something cool comes up. I've got some goals that I want to accomplish by the end of 2020. One of them is I want to be a keynote speaker in front of 20,000 people. So I've started doing a lot of speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been going really well. I've got three books that I'm working on, one that should be out pretty soon. This is actually something that your audience will be interested in. I interviewed the top 100 mm-hmm. millennial real estate agents in the country. And I put all their information. I asked them the same seven questions. Basically, what do you do to market? Um, tell us about your first deal. Uh, you know, some of these questions, like what do you do to, um, what's a piece of advice that you would give to any new agent joining the business? Yeah. And I put them all in this book. That's so it's valuable. being edited right now. Me and Bill Pipes, actually, who uh-huh. was my original guy that I met to keep me in real You're estate. co-writing it. We co-wrote it, okay. um, put it together. And we put a lot of our own insights in it. And so it's called The Next Wave of Real Estate. Cool. Um, so that'll be coming out. I've got another book coming out where um, that teaches people how to invest in real estate. Um, nice. That'll be out by the end of next year. Um, and then I just kind of have one that's kind of my own stuff, my own story, things like that. So I've got a lot of that stuff going on. Um, but honestly, I just love meeting cool people, n- new people. I'm trying to reach as many lives as I can. You know, that was kind of the point of the podcast mm-hmm. and the blog that I do now and all that kind of stuff is just inspiring other people. Um, I probably will settle down a little bit more over the next year or two. And, um, but I don't know. I, I have a goal to hit 100 countries by the end of 2020. I got wow. about, I'm about halfway there. But I've got some cool trips you know, for next year. I'm going to Israel and Egypt and um, going to the Baltic Sea to do a cruise. And me and my nine best friends from high school, we do a trip every year. Uh, we're going to go hit you know, Ireland and Scotland nice. and do some fun stuff like that. Um, so I don't know. I again, I have my goals. I have specific goals I want to hit with this program. I'm I'm selling and working on, mm-hmm. um, but I've got some really. Um, is this is this your mentoring program? This is the mentoring about? program. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it, for anybody that's interested in the webinar, they can go to jimmyrexgoals.com. Okay. Super simple. That's how you can sign up for it, or just follow me on any of my platforms. Okay. Um, I'm always posting stuff. My Instagram is probably the best place to follow me because I put a lot of stuff in my story, okay. uh, Mr. Jimmy Rex, and. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know where my path goes, but I'm excited. It's fun, and um, it's just been a lot of fun. That's so awesome. And it's real estate, It's that's the beauty of it is, you know, that's been my vehicle for everything. Mm-hmm. It really does. Done right, real estate creates. And, and But don't shortchange what it took to get, you know, those five, six, seven years of just grinding yeah. and grinding. Yeah. But it really can set you up um, for a life of whatever you want. So if you could give the most important pieces of advice for any agent who's struggling or anyone who's thinking about becoming an agent, what would that be? 
I'd say this above anything else is you know where you're falling short. You know why it's not going better. If we're really willing to look at ourselves and be self-aware, mm-hmm. um, that self-awareness is such a key piece. You know what you're not doing that you need to. Yeah. Uh, nowadays in 2018, there's so much information. There's no excuse for like, I don't know how to do it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there's a million different formulas out there that all work if you do it. Everything is figure outable. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. sure. And so I would just say, um, but the difference, this is a quote that I had on my wall in my prospecting booth for five years. Um, the difference between successful and unsuccessful people is successful people have merely learned to do the things that unsuccessful people don't want to do. Mm. It's the hard stuff, right? Yeah. Like anybody can go to the office every day and listen to 10 podcasts and play on the internet and you go talk to the other yeah. agents that aren't selling anything and, and you know, and pretend you'd put a hard day work in. That's yeah. the agent that's willing to pick up the phone and you don't compromise. From 8 to yeah. 11, I'm on the phones making calls. From 11 to 12, I'm doing my lead follow-up. Yeah. In fact, from 7.30 to 8 in the morning, I'm doing my role playing. From noon to 2, I'm on lunch appointments with clients. From 2 to 6, 7, 8, I'm on appointments. And you just don't go home until you've got deals, you know. And um, if you're willing to do that long enough, it just, it does. The cool thing about real estate, it's not residual in the sense that once you sell a home, you got to start over. Mm-hmm. But it gets it just gets so much easier the more effort you put into that. It's, you know, Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours to become an expert. The faster you can get to 10,000 mm-hmm. hours. Meaningful hours, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, real hours of work, uh-huh. the better off you're going to be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I really think our listeners are going to love all of this advice that you've given us and um, just be inspired by your story. So you bet. It's Thanks been a for pleasure. having me. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you so much.